This is Steve Dillon and this is our sixth video blog. Today we'll be going over the Keith Bugle. The last blog dealt with the Ophiclyde. This is the soprano of the Keith family, the Keith Bugle. Now, of course it has keys like a saxophone and that being said, a lot of times the keys are corked for intonation. This one's a B-flat bugle, seven keyed. And the interesting thing to your trumpet players out there is the keyed bugle just doesn't, unlike a natural trumpet, you use one hand to activate keys or, or the key trumpet. This one, you have the keys down here, and this being only a seven key, you only have two keys to deal with, they had eight, nine, and ten keyed bugles. Now, they made uh, the bugles in four different keys, this being the lowest, the B-flat. They made a C, an E-flat, which was very popular in our country, and a high B-flat. I have seen those. We had one uh, for sale many years ago. It is currently in the Oakley collection. They made them out of different materials. This one's made of brass. I've seen them out of copper and sterling silver. And the one in the Oakley collection that came from us, the high B-flat, was made of tortoise shell. There's only two of those in existence. One's in the Smithsonian and high E flat and the one in the Utley collection. Now, the bugle in America has a very interesting history and starts basically around 1817 with an Irishman named uh, Richard Willis who, by the way, we had his bugle which is also in the Utley collection. It's an E flat bugle. And Willis was hired as the bandmaster at West Point in 1817 and purchased two bugles for the band around that time. Now, Willis died around 1830 and had a big influence in this country on music. The next bugler who was of great importance is a gentleman from Philadelphia by the name of Francis Johnson. Francis Johnson was an African American and was quite instrumental in not only introducing the bugle around, but introducing many forms of music. He was very uh, progressive of his time and wanted to introduce people to various forms of music. One of the things he did, and I'd like to read a little bit about it, is his band and himself went to Europe and England in the 1830s, and at one point, he states he was bring, when he came back to America, he was bringing home with, with him at much expense a large collection of new and the most fashionable music. And he talks about he received music, or he doesn't say it directly, but we assume he received music from Strauss the Elder, waltzes that he performed in our country. So he brought back waltzes and introduced them to our country. Now these are things you don't find in most of the history books that uh, the musicologists will talk to you, but we don't develop in a box. So waltzes in our country was, were introduced by Francis Johnson. I'd like to also share with you something else. It is uh, a silhouette of Francis Johnson his bugle and his wife. Now this is a very good book if you can go out and buy it. It is called Francis Johnson Chronicle of a Black Musician in the Early 19th Century Philadelphia by Charles Jones. A very good book, very well worth the money. The next bugler who was of importance was a gentleman from Boston by the name of Ned Kendall. Kendall ran the Boston Brass Band for a time and was very, very celebrated as a keyed buglist, just like Francis Johnson was. They were, you could say, rivals, though they didn't come uh, in contact all that often. And Ned Kendall performed with uh, Patrick Gilmore at one point, and it's what people call the demise of the keyed bugle. Um, they took a piece and split it up with Gilmore playing on E flat cornet one strain and and Kendall playing E flat bugle on another strain and Gilmore kept getting faster and faster and faster. Kendall kept up, but they say this was the start of the demise. The key bugle that, that was in 1856. The key bugle started to fade out of prominence, and by the Civil War and a little bit after, the key bugle had uh, basically faded 
from uh, the music scene. There were a few people who did play them, but it was not as prominent. Now, Francis Johnson's dates are from 1792 to 1884, and Kendall's dates are from 1808 to 1861. Now, we have James Herzog here, who has been brave enough to learn a piece this morning for us. He's going to do a fine job on it. I know it. He's going to play something on the bugle for you. He's going to play, he's going to play Polonaise for Keyed Bugle by uh, Joseph Kufner. Mr. Herzog. <laughs> As you can see, and, and that's very good because he only has been practicing on this for 15 minutes, uh, there are a few bugle soloists in our country. Uh, one that comes to mind is Ralph Dungeon. Uh, I've done some key brass uh, festivals with him. He's a phenomenal key buglist. And it's just another part of instrumental history that you don't really hear much about. I hope it's been a format informative to you. And uh, let us hear from you. I, I have heard from some of you that you really enjoyed these and will continue doing them as long as we can be of service. Thank you and I hope to speak with you again.